I used to want to be a doctor. But now that I changed my mind a dozen times, I'm here to tell you that every man is okay. I am so fortunate to be here today and share with you a story about how I and many of our young patients uh, face struggles when they have to answer the question, what is success? Growing up in a relatively traditional family, I was taught these three rules. Number one, your job should bring respect. Number two, your job should bring money. And number, and number three, which is the most important of them all, is that if your job doesn't follow the rules number one and number two, you should go get a number. So, yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. I understood the rules. I was a smart kid. Back in my young days, you could see me searching on the highest paying jobs. Wow. Anesthesiologist, the one that put the injection uh, to make you go to sleep before surgery, they made $300,000 a year. And Omaha, teachers, public service, social workers. I wouldn't want to talk about that. So naturally, I started trusting most of older members of my family to give me wise advice to determine a future job. But there was a moment when I started to question myself, when I saw one by one my siblings, cousins, who were about to go on in their life as adults, get interrogated by the police, asking, when are you going to get a job? How much do you earn? Where do you work? I guess it's kind of nice. Um, to be honest, at that moment, I felt that someday I might too have to say goodbye to my dreams. Family is important in all cultures, but nowhere is it, does it play as strong a role in deciding a child's career success as a nation. From the dinner table to that time after your parents teach you conferences or your parents told you to work hard, Asian parents usually take it very seriously early on in a child's life to determine what kind of career their child should take. Now, there are a few reasons for this, such as delayed economic development, and a lack of progressive laws, such as, such as welfare, family planning, and education. This led to Asian families having to figure out the problems themselves. According to Shaman Lee, professor of international business at Old Dominion University, and Simo Park, the executive director of the Institute of Emerging Market Studies, if they explain that the absence of laws in the Asian societies have usually promoted tight, more rigid family bonds. Simply, when the laws aren't there to protect and to help these families, they have to turn to each other and when they work and struggle to build their lives onwards, they make sure to save those lessons to the next generation. It is without a doubt from that point on why many Asian parents would frown upon uniqueness and a shining new career paths. After all, they struggled all their lives to make enough money just to continue to live. And their children now want to pursue a new way and not follow their path, which they say will lead to success. Now, what is this formula or this way of success that I'm talking about? I'm referring to a list of priorities that Asian parents developed through long circumstances and experiences. If the lack of opportunities taught them the importance of higher education, then the constant toil and exhaustion to barely achieve financial well-being taught them to always tell their children 
it's better to get an established job than do what you want. Which is why the majority of Asian Americans believe that higher education is necessary, and according to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, the top three jobs for Asian Americans are computer science, mathematics, or medicine. While I'm not denying that many Asians truly like those areas, the fact remains that parents want to call the shots regarding their children's profession. In 2012, the Pew, Pew Research Center, one of the most famous social research organizations in America, released a report where they showed that 66% of Asian Americans believe that parents should have some or a lot of influence regarding their children, their child's profession. This leads their children to more established and safe roles for Asians. Areas where, in the past, Asians have gone for and have left behind lessons, rules, or guidelines as to how to achieve success in those areas. This formula for success does not come out of nowhere. It is formed and regimented through long experiences and circumstances, not to mention the social pressure and incentives that led parents to think this way. If we accept but discuss critically, not deny or reject the personal and historical reasons for why parents feel this way, we might be able to dismantle it and even more achieve reconciliation with past generations and change long-term views about success. The Asian formula for success doesn't work for everybody. It, it says that you will be guaranteed respect and, and money. But at the same time, many children have been left miserable. And even after some have followed that formula, they don't even succeed. And their mental health is destroyed. Now, a famous example of somebody who has ditched this system early on is Andrew Yang. He, is, he was an unsuccessful presidential candidate in the 2020 US presidential election, but he was also Yale educated, a lawyer who switched his corporate career for a nonprofit to try to uplift small businesses who were in struggling areas of America. While his parents might not like this move, he did, and that's important. And he achieved something that many people did not realize and did not have, which is purpose. Now, I want to read to you a quote from an article from the Society of Human Resource Management which says this about Asian workers. I want to bring this up because this, was, this is often ignored by young Asians as they go into the workplace. It starts, Asian, Asian workers are praised, uh, are painted as hardworking, smart, and faithful. However, they are also deemed as those who lack ambition, the creativity, and the confidence that leadership requires. Now, I'm not saying that the formula for success is entirely at fault for this. Because humility is in the blood of some Asian cultures. And respect for hierarchy and elders has led to some Asian workers to not rebel or talk back to their bosses. But at the same time, it has put Asian workers at a disadvantage. Because if people don't have the motivation to work at a job, then how can they possibly train themselves and put in the effort to rise up the ranks? If they don't want to work, but choose to follow the careers that their parents chose for them, how can they receive the knowledge and the intuition to suggest solutions to an organization's problems? And hence, 
The problem facing Asian Americans, uh, Asian workers, is not the lack of abilities. We have it, but it is the misdirection of ability. The Asian formula for success tells you what you need to do, what you need to prepare, but it ignores the reality of careers. It doesn't talk about mental well-being, or job satisfaction, or your life goals and dreams. Yes, computer scientists and doctors make a lot of money, and they're well-educated. But look, who has to start their lives again when you decided to switch careers later? Who will struggle to find hope and, motive and motivation in your life? And who will lose the once-in-a-lifetime chance to do your dreams? The answer is none other than you. If you fit others' characterization of you, but you don't listen to what your soul is saying to you, you are going to be excluded. And you feel squeezed, and you will feel that you want to change to a career that actually benefits you and enriches your life. To all my Asian friends, siblings, and cousins, you are not alone in this struggle. But you will be if you ignore what your soul is trying to say to you. Success is not decided at, the fam at a family dinner table. It is decided about whether you have lived up to what you said for yourself. Whether that be making a lot of money for your future family, or helping people in desolate areas of the world, or simply turning your hobbies into a career. They all work and they all value the same. And let me say that teachers are magical in the eyes of children, that public servants serve their people and country before themselves, and social workers who light the fire in so many needy individuals in this world. Before I go, I would like to leave this message. View success in your eyes, Thank you.